all right hello guys my intentions for this video today is to just go over my thought process and how i tackle the game in the past i was like rank 30 challenger north america so as i'm climbing up through the ranks right now i'm just recording games and i'm going to be giving my commentary over a game and what i would do in certain situations now, most people think that this game is just a lottery system, but there's more ways to play than you guys think. Most people just think you can win streak to the end, or you get a high roll in most cases to win. I do think that's the case in some prismatic lobbies. Some people will just get the best things on Earth. And as you can see a few patches ago with, like, let's say, Syndra reroll. I mean, a two-star Syndra would out-DPS most four-star two costs in the entire game. So those are some exceptions, right? Coming off at the start, guys, we're just going to be buying pairs where we can and seeing where we go from there. So we'll go over some of the augment choices here today for you guys so you guys can learn where I'm like thinking about what, it, what, what I'd pick. So if we look at our board here, we didn't really have any shapeshifters, so shapeshifter emblem wouldn't be a good go. Now, if we had a lease and, you know, a plus one, I would consider ash or something like that, it wouldn't be like the worst shape shapeshifter crown to go in the game. You really don't want to go with this though. What I'd recommend you guys do on two ones if you really want to improve your game is on two one, you guys want to be looking for an econ augment. Something that's going to give you gold, something that's going to get your snowball moving. You don't want to be choosing a really big combat augment super early in the game unless it's like the attack speed one where you get attack speed per combat as you keep going and towards the end of the game, it gives you basically, let's say, a gold augment could become a prismatic or a silver could become a gold augment, right? You guys have to consider this is a prismatic augment. It gives you a huge injection of just stat, whatever it is. So you don't want to waste it on something stupid. So we're not going to take Shapeshifter Crown here. Level up is really good, but, you know, I was watching Setsuko's video or his stream the other day, and he was saying there's no five cost that you can just throw it on your board and stabilize like in other sets. So the idea that you're going to fast 9 and try to get, like, even if you hit, people are going to be hitting Tristana 3, people are going to be hitting a lot of other reroll comps and things like that, to where, like, you don't know, cast it in 3. They stabilize super hard, and then they're just good the rest of the game. You know, you hit the Callista, you're, you're all set. So the idea that um, you're going to be able to hit, like, the Ari, the um, Z uh, Zareth, Tom Kench, Hecarim, with the arcane emblem and be able to like fully stabilize even then Zareth is just so bad i can't imagine a fast nine board where like you're really able to stabilize and just went out especially especially in a prismatic so i don't think level up's a good to go like the rest of the set spoils of war guys is a econ augment that i was telling you guys about and you have to usually a good condition you have to think about for spoils of war is you have to be able to like kind of stomp some boards in stage two which i didn't in this case but usually if you guys are going this, just like the Draven Augment from a Hero Augment from a few sets ago, where you gain loot, um, you're going to want to present the strongest board you can in the early game, right? So we refresh the Shapeshifter's Crown and upgrade an adventure. After upgrading four champions to three-star, gain a, a Magnificent Reward, gain four one-cost one champions. Eh. I mean, it's super bad. The only comp you're really going to be able to do this on probably is like zoe poppy uh, lilia something like that I, I can't ever see this one being like super good um and i think i refresh level up here going long you can no longer gain interest gain 10 gold now start gaining start around gain 4 xp um eh, i i really don't like it i like the idea of being able to snowball with spoils of war right so it gives you guys a bit of a perspective here and at this point, I want to present the strongest board I possibly can for Spoils of War to at least be able to kill a unit or two and roll that 40% chance, right? At this point, I was considering playing Kog'Maw and Nunu, especially if you get out early on the board, you're able to start getting some of those Blitzcranks. Blitzcrank 2 is a big stabilizer. As you can see, you always want to use the Team Planner guys to help you um, present an avenue to start getting to where you got to get going, right? I am not familiar enough with the units yet on the set to be like, on a fast roll down to look what I need. This, you kind of see a ribbon above it. It kind of makes it a whole lot easier than other sets. I think that um, Honey Mancer is just infinitely better than the Hunter trait here because at least then Blitzcrank does damage. There's just a lot of chip damage here. Now, 
one thing I will tell you guys is when you play this game, a lot of it's just mental in terms of like, if things aren't going well, then you start making bad decisions, just like in any other psychological or chess game or something like that. Um, and you're going to see it. I'm just going to follow standard leveling. So we leveled up on 2 1, 2 5. But you're going to start realizing, dude, that all these people are going to start waffle stomping your boy. And there wasn't a whole lot I could do about it. Because in these prismatic lobbies, there's just some boards that just stabilize super hard, right? Like this dude has this radiant item. He's going to get a few more. And I'm not even, I killed one unit on the whole board. I'm taking five. And you start getting hit for these large lump sums. But as I'm starting to scout around, I'm realizing there's more and more Kog'Maw players. So I start transitioning my board here. I'm like, okay, what's a good max cap board to play? Pyro's really good. If you guys are looking for some really good boards right now, and you're debating on what to play, Rise Portal's really good. Um, Pyro Blasters is really good. And especially if you're just looking flexible to play into a two-star four-cost board. And I think Pyro caps out really high, but you want to get that on your board early, right? We're going to be making 20 gold where we can, and we're just going to be slamming items. We know Rumble has anti-heal, guys, but it's not always it's not always reliable. Sunfire Slam, I think it's a bad habit I've had from other sets, guys. I don't know if you have to shake this habit as well. Sunfire used to be a god-tier item until it got nerfed into Oblivion. And now I really don't see the term uh, point of having Sunfire. One thing to note, though, is when we're playing the Blasters comp... Um, and you have the dragon trade out on the board. I believe it's when you burn or something like that, Shivana at the three dragon heals or something like that. And I don't know if her um circling um sphere around her technically burns. So Sunfire is a little catalyst to allow her to actually get her um dragon three upgrade ability, right? And I'm just happy to be killing units out on these boards. Um if we're losing, it's fine. I'm just glad to be killing some units. Um, next time we level up, we'll be on 3-2 coming up in a few intervals. We're holding on to pairs. I'm not rolling for anything. You really want to be making these interest thresholds, okay? I'm just kind of viewing a Spoils of War as like a little econ injection at this point because it's a win more augment. That's why it was Draven's augment. So if you present a really strong board in the early game and you kill their whole board, you gain more gold. But I can't view it that way. Also, I started looking at my comp. When you want to play Blasters and you get two large rods... It's kind of difficult because the items that you're going to have to make are going to be really subpar, right? So now we're at 50 gold. You're going to see maybe some people, because of Prismatics, they're so rich, they'll roll up to uh, 6 here on 3-2. We saw one guy level up. And this is what you guys want to kind of pay attention to. So if you're streaking on 3-1, there's instances in which you're going to want to level up to preserve that streak. Like this guy here, um, I'm not familiar with that Prismatic. But I'm assuming he leveled up to 6 because he wanted to preserve a streak of some sort. But it makes no sense for me to do it. I'm already loose streak and I'm on a 4 streak. I'll go over these for you guys again. Sorry about that. i got to be a little bit quicker about that. Okay, so Unleash the Beast. Gain a Sterix Gauge when its effect triggers. The holder gains 30% attack speed for the rest of the combat and immunity to crowd control for 10 seconds. Now, this is really good on the Nyla reworld board and probably the Fiora um, warrior board i can't think of too many other comps this would be gonna this would be good on like a uh, camille for multi strikers or something like that but beyond that i can't imagine um unleash the beast to be all that good especially where we're going for um this might actually be really good on like nasus if we're playing blasters um but i eh, i'd probably never play it hunter crest really bad we're not sticking with it and the best variation of hunters really is kind of um it's either Olaf carry or Wukong Jinx 3 carry. Category 5, really bad. Um, I mean, it's like kind of okay because we're playing Blasters, but usually you'd want this with like Pandoras and then play like Multicaster with like either Ash carry or Callista carry. You're not going to really want to do this. I mean, you can put this on like... This would be really good on um, Smolder, but I mean, we're a ways away from Smolder. We're on 3-2. Um, we're not going to be able to hit that. And we go with replication because, one, we have already two large rods. We're going to really struggle to get tank items here or be able to get the other components that we need. We need a lot more bows. At this point, I already have, um, better off just getting the, um, 
Negatron Cloak. That way we can either choose to build Declaw here or we can build a QSS. See, we got to start killing off some of these components here. We don't want to be building Ionic Spark. And then at some point we're going to be praying to get a bow to be able to kill one of these. You could always make um, Knight's Vow. Not the best decision in the world. The other thing to know, guys, about my gameplay here is I'm really not positioning the best. I should probably be looking which side to position. That way all my DPS isn't going into a Bramble Vest Declaw um, Blitz. But one thing to note is we are pretty rich, okay? We're, we're pretty rich right now. Another good thing to note is usually on the carousel coming up here, guys, there will be two, uh, a lot of four costs. We're going to be fishing either for a Nasus or a Varus at this point because we're kind of leaning into the Pyro. There's there's some other avenues you can go. You could go fully um the Callista vertical with like uh Zillion, Nasus, things like that. So you gotta be able to play flexible here. So I wouldn't really necessarily recommend using team planner on your roll down. I think it's a good template to use, but you really gotta kind of know what four costs you want to hold on to here. Because we didn't end up getting any of the four costs we're looking for. We're gonna be looking to grab some pairs and lean into the pyro angle a little bit. We're able to get that Shen pair. We're not going to donkey any gold. We're already on like a five loss streak or something along that line. So we're just going to kind of lean into it at this point. Um, we're not definitely still not going to be rolling any gold. I'm just going to slam all of our tank items on the Nasus and slam Gunblade, which Gunblade is not the best item. It is not the best item, but at a certain point, you guys can't be chilling with all these components on the bench. I do got to kill some things for spoils of war. I don't know if I win this. I still think I lose this. So we're six streaking, guys. Losing this much, we're already at 42 HP. I think most people would be worried here. Now, the big, the good part about having this much gold is we get to decide here on 4-1 or 4-2 if we want to do a fat roll down. The incentive of going to level 8 on 4-1 is, one, all the four costs are still in the pool because most people are waiting for their augment to see on 4-1 whether or not what they want to roll for, but if you have enough econ to be able to go eight on uh four one, you have just prio and all the four costs are in the pool pretty much. And since all the legendaries are in the pool as well, even though it's like a one or three percent or whatever it is, you have a higher odds to be able to oh that's the other thing I want to point out to you guys. So sorry, I'm I'm trying to get you guys some fundamentals. So as you can see in the bottom left, we're at 34 XP out of 36. This is why we pump the gold. So it's when we, we that's why, um, one, we're able to keep the eight loss streak, 50 gold interest, but also coming on the next turn, when we level up, coming into our neutrals, we're going to have a higher odds of shot, meaning we're probably going to have a higher chance at four costs as well. So there are like, there's little techs you guys can do to better help your position from a lose streak here. I mean, this is a pretty fat gold injection. And we're going to probably do a fat roll down on 4-1, send it to zero. And really kind of fish for our units because we don't have a Kogma to, we don't have anything else. So we're going to really be praying here. We're not going to care about components. We're just going to get to start donkey rolling, right? Um, We're just going to see what we can grab here. Big thing was hitting the Varus. And then at this point, I should have, I should have, yep, we got the Brer. We know we got to kill the, um... Uh, large rods because nobody's going to really want to be able to use it and now since we rolled down everybody who's not hitting on the re-rolling we were stabilized pretty hard right now we would have liked to try to get um a smolder over this camille sorry about that guys this is on times two speed you already know all right so portable forge choose one of four artifacts we already got three items on our Varus. We already got three items on our Nasus, which is our two-star four-cost carries. Couldn't care less about, really, the Portable Forge at this point. Crash Test Nummies is good because, one, we have a Rage Blade now on Varus. It gives them time to ramp up, including the Blasters trait. So Crash Test Nummies really is good with Blasters. It just buys you time. Um, or Support Items, pretty decent. We're good. That's why we reforge the uh, Artifact right away. Not today. Really good if you're playing multicasters and you get it like 3-2 because that gives you time to tailor another um, Edge of Night throughout the course of the game. Ascension has always been bad. I wish somebody at the company would make Ascension actually good. Um, it seems like every item or augment that allows as time goes on to have a bigger and bigger win percentage is just completely bad. They had the one item that allows you 
like it's like the Shrima Ascension thing. They went from like 20 seconds to 22 seconds to where like basically every single combat now ends before you can ever ascend. Um, so it's just not good. So we rock with the crash test. And although we keep sending it to zero, I don't think it's bad because we're one off either of our two star four costs here. So if you guys keep donkeying it, I'm not going to blame you. I want to be able to hit at least one of them. And we were able to hit the other blaster here. So we're chilling. Always throw the crash test dummies usually on the outside. That way at least they try to go for the back line to stun, stun a little bit. But at this point now, if hard stabilized, nobody else has like really hit any four costs because everybody's chilling down at like lower intervals real rolling. Like these guys are rolling for Mord 3, um, Rumble 3. So we're, we're chilling. Great villain. And then now we're just going to kind of rake in the dough. And at this point, guys, you have to start scouting around looking at the other boards. I think with Spoils of War, I'll be able to get enough dosh winning that I can actually go 9 from this angle. Because if I go 9, 1, I have all the natural shops to 9 to be able to hit um, my 2 star 4 cost carries. I'm also, when I go into 9, I'm going to be able to try to fish for the Smolder that we're really banking on. Smolder is such a big win con, you guys can't kind of go for or can not not go for it if that makes sense sorry can't english the best here today um spatula is really good guys one because going into stage five they give you the augment for another spatula for 15 gold i believe it is so you can get a tactician's crown or pyro is spatula with the bow so you're able to get that five pyro technology on them see so we were able to hit our um nasa's one nasa's two no diff i'm just going to tell you guys the truth hitting the virus here was big and now we're going to be um, just leveling up to 9. One thing, you, if you guys didn't know this, is Varus will shoot his arrow at the largest clump of enemies, plus 1 hex. So what does this mean? As you see him launching his stuff out, which also, by the way, guys, we start getting Nikos and components of the chest for spoiler war, depending on the stage, so it's kind of cool. Um, you're not going to see me slam the large rod yet, because we can still get a Tactician's Crown for 5 Pyro, by the way. So we should hold on to this. And unless we find the Smolder and we're losing, then we should slam it. But you want to move the Varus one hex forward. So we have him in the back row. You're going to want to move him one forward on either side, depending on where they're grouping. So if it's like Rise and Portal all on one side, you'd want to move it forward one hex here. So that way he would shoot his arrow and it would hit the largest clump in the back, which would be, in this case, the second arrow wouldn't be hitting the Tarek when it's just him with the gargoyles. It would shoot and blow up the back line. So that's kind of what you guys want to do. You got to start. I'm slowly learning what the. Um, Unit's ability is doing the best way to position them. Varus really, if you're losing your combats to a lot of these comps, a lot of it comes down to just positioning. So you can move that little cheeky angle around, especially if you're like winning a combat here or there and you kind of want to finally tech it in at the last moment and the other dude don't know, you can end up doing that. Oh, and we hit the smolder tech. At this point, we're not waiting for a tactician's crown here. We know the best items on Smolder is like Last Whisper, Infinity Edge, and then um, Rage Blade. And we went with the Radiant Rage Blade on Smolder because once you get Dragon 3 out there, so at 9 we're going to kind of be looking for a Namzi here, believe it or not. That are like a Bastion unit because Namzi will be able to... I don't think we really need to because he has a Gun Blade. But we're going to see the um, Namzi really start the Fountain Heal. Because he just starts attacking so fast with this Radiant, right? I don't want to hit the treasure chest off to the side so that homie kills that first. But, as you can see, it's kind of cool. Smolder is probably my favorite 5 cost of the set right now because there's so many cool items on him. Like, they have, like, the new, like, artifact... Like, uh, it looks like a snow glove or whatever. It allows him to zoom around and he gains durability and like 60% attack speed. So I think they kind of made that item just for him for the set. So it's kind of nice. Other thing to note now is everybody in this lobby is dying. You know, they're at 28 HP, 18, 7, 1, 49, 32. We have enough gold from our prismatic to really kind of get a good chunk of change. We... Should have been holding on to more of them, but now you're going to kind of want to fish for either 3-star Nasus or 3-star Varus and paying attention to when people are dying at this point. You either have to justify rolling for Smolder 2 
or looking and seeing who's dead or who's still in the lobby, depending on the pools of four costs. So if another dude has three Nasuses, there's no point for me to fish for three uh, star Nasus at this point, right? If a dude has three Varus, there's no point for me to fish for it. I'm donking for the Smolder. I'll hold on to the other units. But the idea that we're going to be able to go nine here, no bueno. Another thing to note, guys, unlike in other sets, we're going to want to be fishing for attack charms this late in the game. You know, you should really, if you have the econ, you know, you really have to wager every single combat holding onto a chunk of change. That way you can make sure for a fact that you're able to have a, you know, a combat augment for the next fight. So we're, we're really fishing for the uh, smolder here. It's not panning out the best. Until we lose, I'm not going to move the Varus 4 to Hex. Because I just think we have enough DPS to just punch through these boards. Especially with the Smolder. We could have probably been level 10 by now. Just, just Super Saiyan. I guess you would try to put in like a portal unit. You'd try, try to put in the... um. Yumi unit or whatever it is. But at this point, we're just going for the three star four costs or going for the uh, smolder. I mean, we're pretty close to the Varus here. We're two off. I think once we hit the smolder two, we're not going to lose the game. We just have too much frontline with the crash test dummies buying out time. And you're going to see with the smolder, with the radiant, he's just pumping out too much deeps. To where if it's like a drain tank comp, like kind of like the rise where it's trying to outvalue you with spawning stuff, eventually he's just machine gunning the whole board. Lucky Gloves with Pandora's Box, that was a kind of a tough one to deal with. We're getting kind of close, man. One thing to note, it's going to sound dumb, is, and I did it here, but if you guys are going for a 3-star 4 cost, one, there are certain games where like, not necessarily for this one. You want to have two two star four costs out on the board. But hopefully you guys learned something. I like making these videos for you. And hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. And I hope you learned something. Best of luck.